surf it, scroll it, pose it, click it, cross it, crack it, switch, update it, name it, read it, tune it, print it, scan it, send it, fax, rename it, touch it, bring it, pay it, watch it, turn it, leave it, stop, format it, buy it, use it, break it, fix it, trash it, change it, mail, upgrade it, charge it, point it, zoom it, press it, snap it, work it, quick, erase it, write it, get it, paste it, save it, load it, check it, quick, rewrite it, plug it, play it, burn it, rip it, drag it, drop it, zip, unzip it, lock it, fill it, call it, find it, view it, code it, jump and lock it, surf it, scroll it, pose it, click it, cross it, crack it, twitch it. So we came to South Bend um, for a two-day appointment. Our first appointments were today with our endocrinologist. Just for like a monthly checkup. We're going to meet with one of our um, nurses who's going to train us on the insulin pump. Yeah. And the Omnipod, which is like on your arm and it gives you like insulin hand-free and you don't have to give yourself a shot or anything. So I'm excited about that. And the insulin pump is going to be really awesome because that's going to eliminate the need for shots. And that's going to be a pretty fantastic option for Andrew. How do you think that's going to help you out? Well, I don't have to take as much shots. I mean, shots just, I just don't want to take them sometimes, but I have to. Technologic. 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 The reason why you want to do the Omnipod is why. Because it, it doesn't have a tube. It doesn't have the tube. Have you actually had the opportunity to wear it? Okay. So, this is a demo kit for you to take home and to actually wear it um, so that you know a little about how it feels. When I first started doing insulin pump trainings, I had two or three, but they all had the tubes on. Omnipod was really new, and I had, how old are you? Eleven. <laughs> Eleven. A, a guy who was just a little older than you did his research and came to me and said, I will never wear a pump with tubes. I will do this. And I said, well, tell me about Omnipod. I did my research, I found a rep, I got trained in it, they got this ordered. He came to me, we put it on him, and he wore it for two hours because she'd done all of this background work on it and invested money in it. And then he was like, no, no, I'm, he was very definite about never wearing a tube. And then he was equally definite about, I'm not okay. wearing that. He ended up going back to a pump with tubes, or going to a pump with tubes, and did very well. So that's why I love the fact that Omnipod allows you to, to wear it. Try so it try it out. In fact, I'm going to give you two kits, because I can, and because you may want to, you may want to wear it and see what it's like. That's interesting, certainly. Um, I wear all this stuff so that I know to tell you what I felt with the um, Omnipod. You have this sticker adhesive, like a big band-aid that holds it in place. And I felt this sticker for about two hours or so. I felt like they had this band-aid on that I wasn't exactly used to. Um, and then after that, I forgot it. Okay. I had it on. I don't do well with band-aids. Uh, my skin gets really red and excoriated is a long word for it. Just raw. I was so excited to wear this that I didn't think about that. Okay. So I just put it on, wore it, practiced with it, and was excited about it. And then about two and a half, two days later, it occurred to me, Noreen, what were you thinking? Oh. I don't do well with this. Yeah. So I parked my car, <laughs> cautiously took it off, and it was fine. Oh. There were no problems whatsoever. That's nice. Now, sometimes kiddos do have problems with the adhesive, but we have remedies for that. It's on your trunk, back and front. You want to avoid the belly button and avoid the backbone. 
and your upper outer thighs. Okay. Those are the places. And you will need to move it around. You can't just say, oh, I love it on the back of my arms and just have it there. Just like rotating your shots yeah. now, you have to rotate these. You have How to often? move them around every time you use it. So it's a pod, a pod will last two to three days. Okay. It will be done. It will end in 72 hours. You have an eight-hour window, so theoretically it'll last for 80 hours if enough insulin. It holds 180 units, which right now should be fine. Yes. Do you have a basal rate? Rate or rates, and you'll have your bolus dose. That goes with the food and everything that we have to. Got it. Your insulin to carb ratios. Now, how do you do one for your food? One to eighteen. And are you using one to eighteen at each meal? We are now. We just had a change. We were having difficulty keeping our sugars down low just from growing and we had a cold. So we've changed it to one. We're one to 18 and we're also um, taking more of the lanches at night. Like to the and 10 units. we will continually change your pump settings. Okay. Until we get As, it to... Until he's not growing anymore. Okay. And out of puberty. And then... As an adult, they get more stable, but he's he's a growing. Yes, yes, indeed. He's a moving target. It will know because of the time of day. Okay. And to make things safer, we would have his target maybe 150. Got it. For bedtime, and if you're dosing him through the night, and then change it back to 120. And again, it would all be programmed in here so, so that you wouldn't have to remember it. The other important thing that you brought up in your daily life yesterday, we would have it so that at this point in time, your active insulin would be about three hours. Okay. With the pump, it will be the same as injections. Right now, you're using pens. Yes, we are. You give the, give the insulin, and it goes in. It starts to work in about 15 minutes, and then at 11 and as sensitive as you are, it takes about three hours for that entire dose of insulin to do its job. With the pump, it's going to be the same. You're going to push your buttons on here. It's going to remotely tell your pod, and your pod then over a minute's time will give you that entire dose. It doesn't stay in the pod. It's in your body. But it doesn't work. Boom. It's, 15 it, minutes still. So we will put, we'll program this for active insulin at about two and a half or three hours. So that if you put a blood in at two hours, it will know that you still have insulin on board. And it will suggest a lower dose than if you had no insulin on board. Okay. Wow. That can be really helpful. You can eat more flexibly. That'll be nice. With safety, and I see the smile there. Yeah. At this age, a lot of kids will tell me, once they get on a pump, I feel more normal. It's a great thing. Absolutely. This this would be on your body. You would be using this. It looks like you're using a cell phone to give yourself insulin. It's pretty cool. Yeah. The pens are better than syringes and vials. And it doesn't look quite as clinical. Um, but it's still, people would be looking at you like, what are you doing? Yeah. And maybe they make comments. Which one? Um, being able to live your life more normally yes. with a good quality of life is a goal. We want kids to be kids. You still have to count your carbs. It does not know how many carbs you're Right. you're eating. So that process does not go away. But instead of 
you doing the math, the logbook, with that sort of thing, you'll enter it into into here. Let me, let's just put in a fake blood sugar. So let's just say that the blood sugar is 144. If you've used this for your blood sugar, it will populate with that. You already know. And use that, yes. Are you going to eat now? Oh. <laughs> And most of the time, with an 11-year-old, it's going to be, yes, yes. that's what they do. <laughs> and then you'd enter how many grams of carbs. Because right now, you're only going to the nearest one unit. Right. With this, we can go to fractions of units. Okay. Right. But if, if it's actually 47, that's going to matter. So enter that, and then it tells you. Do you want to use these values for it? It's kind of a double check. It's showing you, right? It's good. Confirm, and it's saying give 2.35. So it can give the 0.35. That's pretty oh, wow. awesome. Yes. Right. There's times when 2.35 would be really helpful. <laughs> yeah. Enter and confirm. Now, it knows it doesn't have a pod, sure. so it didn't actually give that, but it did do the math. And it wasn't your math because it's not programmed mm -hmm. for you, Andrew. Sure, sure. But <laughs> being able to precisely give the dose can be so helpful. Exactly. You could give three times during the time you're eating. Oh. Or more. We had one kid that came back, we downloaded this, and during Thanksgiving dinner, he did like six different boluses. Okay. But he did it when he knew what he was going to eat. Sure. You can't do that with injections. No. That would but <laughs> say you don't know how what you're going to eat. Um, so there in that meal, you had the sandwich, you had the side, you had the fruit, you entered it three different times yeah. because you didn't know exactly how much. And that's getting to better than waiting till the very end and putting yeah. in the total four. That's great. Those kind of issues can be kind of the worst part about having diabetes. What would you say is the worst part about diabetes for you, Andrew? The shots. Getting the shots. Because of how they feel or because of another reason? How they feel and I have to take them constantly. So both. Yeah. Both okay. Reasons. So that's another valid reason to have a pump. That is that um, a short annoyance? Does it hurt a short amount of time, like a minute, or is it last oh, just, a minute. just a minute okay but even that minute is something when this goes into place on your body your PDM will instruct this pod to insert what we call a cannula it's a very short tube that gives the insulin it goes in place you never see the needle Right. You feel it and you hear it. It feels like getting an injection of insulin now. Okay. It gives a, a loud sound. Have you, it's a little disconcerting sometimes. Um, but I would think I would get over it pretty quickly. Because it's just one time for three see, days. Can you see that little cannula in there? It's a little blue line. See a little blue line in that window. Yes. Yes. And that's what delivers insulin. And that's a pretty important part of this whole thing. Wow. But the needle itself goes in and out. When you have give yourself an injection now, the needle goes in, and how long do you put it? keep it in place? Seconds. You keep it in place for a count of 10. With this, the needle putting the cannula in is not in that long. It just goes boom, boom. <laughs> you want, okay. we've, we've been reading and discussing and researching and looking at... I knew at, from our conversations yeah, that been, you had been doing that. Um, the pods last for three days. Right. It's a disposable pump. So with a regular pump, it starts out more expensive. It's thousands of dollars. But it will last for four years. Then with each three days, you would get um, a new cartridge, new tubing mm -hmm. that goes in place. The every three day thing is cheaper on a traditional pump. Oh, I see. Than getting a pod. The pods. Except sometimes insurance companies want you to try one traditional way, maybe before the new way, 
or something like that. Well, I mean, that could be an option. With some of the um, non-commercial insurances, they don't quite know how to deal with cheaper up, up front and more expensive later. They they don't know how to work that in their system. Sometimes they'll say, oh yeah, we'll cover this. But then they don't know how to cover this because it's more expensive than the tubing and the cartridges. Right. So they're, the non-commercial insurances have been slower to say that they will do this. Okay. There are some reasons to go to this, though. There takes out a lot of user error. Mm -hmm. Making sure that the tubing is connected, right. making sure that the tubing is full of insulin, making sure that you can, that it stays on your body, can lead to some um, failures in this system. Mm -hmm. There's more user error. Okay. Whereas this goes on, it is automatically, you just push buttons, it goes in at the um, an established angle, and we we don't have a connection. We don't have the tubing. Okay. We don't have the disconnect. Some will find that being able to disconnect this would be on your body um, insertion set here, and you can with a traditional pump connect and disconnect. That's that's an interesting thing too to remember mm -hmm. if we have to go that route. One of the kiddos that I was working with, he played basketball and he did not like the feel of this at basketball. He, it would get knocked on, knocked off, that sort of thing. And he decided to switch after he used it for probably a good year, so okay. he knew what he was talking about. And he became more successful with a traditional pump because he could disconnect during times that he was really active, like okay. playing basketball. He was running, running, running. Okay. That so became a a convenience for him. Having it stay on though can be convenient. Disconnecting would only be acceptable for a one hour period of time. Well, that's After, the maximum. Yes. Okay. Having to. Um, reconnect then um, and make sure that you're connected make sure everything's working after that right now with a traditional pump this happens to be the tandem pump this is our next these two are our biggest well I've told you about the tandem you mentioned this. it and, and we were looking for it so because we're here and we don't know what's going to happen with this just to show you gotta, gotta learn it because you never know this one takes um, batteries I think it's two triple A's okay. and they should last a couple weeks. This is a charge unit. Okay. So you charge it just like your phone or your tablets. In fact, it's the same ch charger for my phone and my tablet. Oh, really? I have a question for Andrew. Andrew, if insurance will not cover the Omnipod and your choice is the tandem, is that a deal breaker for you? Because I know that you said you didn't want tubes. Would that mean that you'd want to stay just on the CGM, just on the Dexcom, and not go on the pump? I mean, if I... If, if it's it, up to that, would you try it at least? If, I if would. I, I would. You would try it. So you'd if give, I had to. If you had to, you would. Okay, okay, good. That's good to know. Good to know, because I'll have you sign both paperworks. Okay. So that, uh, and only submit the one. Yeah, sometimes insurance sometimes companies will say, well, until you try this one first, we want, just like before you can take um, a pump, you, you should, for six months try managing the diabetes on your own. There may be some other requirements, like before you can go to this new type of pump, you need to try this first, or something my, like that. My experience is that they'll say, we don't cover this. Okay. So then we have to start here. Okay. And then, you know, and then we, if we, we just, so you Until still want to do it. they decide that they will cover it. Okay. So you still want to go for the pump, even if it's not the exact one you wanted. Are you sure? Yeah. I don't think this is going to be a big deal. I mean, it's got a little thing that sticks in here. It's actually smaller than, than, than this. Yeah, the, the thing that it's connected to the Omnipod is actually a bigger piece. You know, you, if you yes. Yes. Well, and you're going to have to have pens available to use as sure. backup. So 
you can always go back to giving injections. But I think you know, there's no hurt in giving it a try. And if you don't like it, then we know. It's not like, hmm, I wonder, well, we didn't do the insulin pump, and I wonder if it would have been okay. And you know, maybe there's a way to make it work. So we'll let, we'll trust Noreen to do the best for us, and then whatever the outcome is, we're gonna we're gonna be you know open minded. Okay, is it? Do we agree on that? Yeah. What the insurance companies will want to know is that this team is dedicated to checking blood sugars. We are. Technologic. 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 Continuous glucose monitoring system. It's our best seller. And we're number one on this one. We want to do it. No questions. With this, it gives you your trend of your blood sugar. Okay. The trend is your friend. The trend is what you need more than the actual number okay. itself. Whether you're trending, especially with the pump, if you're trending up out of sight, maybe the pump is not, the insertion set is not working. Um, if you're trending low, you know, your blood sugar could be 140, but if you're dropping like a rock, that could give you good guidance as far as um, appropriating a snack before it gets down to 40, that sort of thing. Okay. The tandem also is working um, on the next steps of it integrated so that using this information, it can affect the, the basal rate and bolus doses. So it's, it's technology, it's, it's kind of moving into even more technology then. Yes, yes. It's not an artificial pancreas, but it's moving in that direction. It, it's moving to integration cool. on that. So with the Dexcom, you would wear something like this. It has this clear thing is the sensor, and you insert a hair-like sensor. Okay. Truly, it's, they said it was smaller than a hair. I would say it's about like a hair. Yeah, like a hair. <laughs> it stays in your body like seven days. It's FDA approved for seven days. With your pump, traditional pump versus the Omnipod, this gets changed out every three days. Right. There's reasons why it can't stay on for longer than that. Okay. Valid reasons. Um, and then it's FDA approved right now, the G5, so that you must check a blood sugar twice a day okay. to calibrate it every 12 hours. So you might decide to do that at 7 o'clock in the morning and 7 o'clock at night. Right. So you still. Um, hope it can also give us great information on how to affect changes in this, in this dosage. Okay. Well, we see that every breakfast, he goes up and never really comes back to where he needs to be. Therefore, we need to give him more insulin for breakfast. Or he climbs all night long. He doesn't have enough basal insulin. We can change that segment. For example, when we receive the Dexcom, step one, do we put, do we just open it and just put, follow the directions and just put it on? You may. With the Dexcom. Right. So That's Dexcom right. we can put on with the yes. video. I think we're going to need the video, too. Yes, um, it's, they have great videos, and they supply that to you. So you have that option. My, until he's on a pump, my suggestion is to not so much have the alarms on for highs. Okay. We're most concerned about the lows. Have the alarms on for the lows. And what, and do, you, what do you program that at? Somewhere 70, 75, or 80, you'll kind of see where you get more com most comfortable with. Okay. Do you feel your lows now, do you think? Yeah. When he's awake. Yes. Yeah. So I wish there was the opportunity of having it at 70 during the day and 80 during the night. But they, um, so if it gets below 70 or below, it will make an alarm, and then we would just treat accordingly. Or if it's, and then have the, the down arrows. Okay. The fall rate so, scheduled also. So fall rate at what, what level? 70 still um, or like maybe 80 they, fall level? Well, they have it 2 milligram or 3 milligram. Okay. So because I hear some sports coming in, you yeah. might want to do 2, 2 milligram per deciliter per minute or something like that. It's either 2 or 3 is are your choice. I called yesterday. Um, they said 
hopefully we you know we may have this within a week. Okay. Um, if that does happen, but it though, can be at a time. Maybe we'll want to do it during spring break. Oh. Another week or two until yes, you get that's it, a great and then point. it's another three weeks or so. You've been doing injections for that, but yes, we would do it. But something to consider. Let's do it during spring break. Yeah, that's not a bad idea. I mean, what's one more week? I mean, we'll get the Dexcom, get it on, have that on for a little that bit. That keeps you in school, and that keeps you in school. Yeah.